Yo, yo. So in this video today, we're going to be going over a few tricks to help quicken up your 3D workflow and make your product renders look that little bit better. We're going to be diving into a few modeling tips as well as how to create a really nice frosted glass and plastic material. You'll be able to use all these tips in other applications. So just because I'm using Cinema 4D and Octane doesn't mean these tricks won't be useful to you. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. So we've got two products here, two different types from The Ordinary. We've got this kind of cream container here, um, as well as a serum glass bottle. This one is made out of glass, um, and this one is kind of has this plastic bottom. Um, so I just wanted to go over how to create these really nice kind of frosted plastics and frosted glass. So yeah. Let's start with this plastic cap on the end of this moisturizing um, container. So here I've actually created two different plastic materials. I've got one for this kind of larger chunk of the cap, as well as this very end kind of plastic material. This one's a little bit more frosted and a bit more rough. And this one is a bit less kind of <clears throat> frosted looking and a bit more reflective almost a little bit more like glass, um, but not quite. So let's just dive straight into the materials. So if I just hide this uh, cap here, we can see that I also have modeled kind of this under part um, of the container, kind of this uh, white squeezy bit where the moisturizer is gonna come out at the end. Um, and what I wanted is kind of this part of the model to still be somewhat visible, su keeping it kind of subtle. Um, but in the actual product, I'll try to put a picture up on screen now, you can still see um, kind of this end cap, I guess you could say, um, through the frosted plastic. So if I just bring this part back um, and change my camera a little bit, you can see that this white bit inside, this end cap is still visible through this frosted plastic. So I wanted to kind of find a really nice balance between being able to see the inside parts of the model, which obviously bring out the more realistic aspects of this shot, um, as well as having this nice frosted look, um, which matches the real product um, in real life. So let me jump straight into this material. Okay, so let's just go over the basic kind of parameters for a normal um, plastic reflective material. We've got a universal material set to octane and octane, um, and albedo black, specular one, metallic zero, roughness I have set at 0 0.04. Um, that's kind of one of the main parts in which how we get this kind of frosted look is a subtle roughness to it. Um, and also when you feel the product in real life, you're gonna feel that slightly rough um, surface. So I wanted to reflect that back into kind of the 3D, 3D side of things. Um, zero there, sheen, um, I've up to one. Um, coating is at one and a roughness of 0 0.06. That just adds kind of another layer um, on top of this kind of roughness channel. Um, thin film zero bump, I have put a noise texture. In here, I've got a Perlin noise set at a power of 0 0.2, an Omega of 0 0.375, and Octave's a pretty standard noise. Um, you'll probably be able to find this in other programs that you're using, um, such as Blender um, and things like that. And then I've just stuck that into a color correction with a brightness of 0 0.1, um, and everything else, I believe, is standard. Um, so yeah, moving on from the bump, normal, we don't have anything. Displacement, we don't have anything. Opacity, normal. The next thing is IOR. Um, this is kind of how reflective um, the surface is. So plastics do tend to be a slightly, slightly lower IOR than this. Um, however, I just couldn't find quite the right look with a lower, lower IOR. So I found that 1.5 was pretty good between really reflective and not too reflective. So I've stuck with 1.5 there. Moving on to kind of the main chunk of this being the kind of medium which is inside this plastic. I have got a scattering medium. I've set the density to 200, the volume step percent to 10. Um, in each of these, um, I've got an RGB spectrum at 100% white. 
going into the absorption and a float texture set at one going into the scattering. That pretty much covers the kind of rougher, um, I guess more frosted plastic. Now for this kind of very end cap, so these are two different materials, this kind of top bit here and this end cap, which is a little bit more see-through um, and a bit more reflective. So if I jump into that one, Uh, what I have here is the same in the bump. Um, I actually think I've disabled the bump for this one. Yeah, and in the medium, I've set the density down to 20 instead of 200. So almost looks as, as if it's not as thick. Um, and then the IOR is still at 1.5. So because we've got that less dense scattering medium there, um, we'll be able to see more of kind of what's underneath um, this object here. Uh, but yeah, IOR is the exact same. So moving on to the serum side of things where we have a glass um, kind of outer casing of the bottle instead of plastic. Um, let's dive straight into that um, here. So here I have a specular material, um, roughness set at 0 0.075. Um, kind of let's tweak this and you can see the difference let's stick this on 0.02 for example so you can see the difference in which just a small amount of roughness makes so on the left side here we have a roughness of 0.02 making it really quite a glossy a really reflective surface and one of just 0.075 0.075 we have this way more kind of rough frosted looking uh, glass material. So something like this in the real product, um, I'll put a picture on screen of kind of how it looks in the real world, is not how it looks. Whereas one like that with some more um, kind of rough surface matches exactly how it is. So as you can see here, I've also modeled the kind of dropper um, that is connected to this lid piece here. Um, and what I wanted to do is just like the cap in the moisturizer, I wanted this to be very slightly visible through the glass itself. Um, so if I just re-enable the glass, you can see, still see that that glass dropper inside um, the glass container is visible. Now this is what is reflected in kind of real world. Um, and it's just these small details that really help kind of elevate your product renders. Instead of just having this look like there's one object and that's it. Um, having this kind of extra detail of there being another object in there just adds a whole nother level of detail and re realism. So modeling these extra bits in your kind of model or in your scene, they all add up together to really increase that detail um, and just show kind of that little bit more effort in which you put into your product renders. Um, another really important thing to keep in mind when modeling these uh, semi kind of transparent objects you can see through um, being plastic or glass is the thickness at which you're modeling um, these models so in the real world this glass kind of bottle is actually quite thick it is quite thick glass so I kept that in mind when modeling this um, as you can see at the bottom here we have this really thick glass layer um, you can almost also see how that reflects in the render here um, as well as kind of this fairly thick wall um, here. So when modeling these plastic or glass models, you wanna keep in mind the thickness. So if you have a thicker bottle, um, so for example, if I bought these in and then the walls of the glass bottle become thicker, you're gonna end up being able to see less of what's inside of the actual bottle. Um, and you're gonna end up getting some different reflections and refractions um, than what you might expect. So adding thickness, but also keep in mind the correct thickness is really important. Having something too thick will obviously end in you not be able to see as much because the light has to go through more kind of depth of glass um, to be able to show that object on the inside. And having something which is too thin may not reflect how it actually is in the real world. Another thing I've been doing recently is using the instance object as the main object in which is in view of the renderer or camera, you could say. Um, the reason why I've been doing this is because I can have a main object or main model 
zeroed out in the coordinates of the world, which means modeling um, becomes a lot more, I guess you could say, reliable with symmetry objects being around the, cent the center of the world, um, as well as your object being, as they say, kind of zeroed out um, and not moved in your scene. That way you can do whatever you want with the instance object while still having in some way a backup um, in your scene, which you can make really quick changes to. So let's say I've got you know, four of these uh, serum bottles in a nice composition product shot, um, but the client wants something changing, let's say like um, the amount which are, the, the amount of grooves which we have here. Instead of having to delete all of the other ones in the scene and work on one and then put the objects back around the scene after I've done that change, what I can do is I can just change one thing in this main, um, in this main modeling kind of null. Um, and let's say they wanted to get rid of um, all these grooves. So if I just hide that, it updates instantly to the instance objects. Now this instant object is the one in view with the camera and the main model in which it's referring to is zeroed out in the center of the world. It just makes your life a little bit easier when the client wants kind of a revision or a change. Um, and I really recommend using instances because it copies everything over perfectly from materials to modifiers, everything. It's just referring to the main object. Another thing to keep in mind when doing these glass and plastic renders is your render settings. Um, th these are really important. So here I have a diffuse depth of 12, a specular depth of 12, and a scatter depth of 8. In my final one, however, I did change the specular depth. So if we just create a quick um, render buffer here, so we compare. In the first one we have a specular depth of 12, and if we up this to say 32, and let this render out quickly, so here we can already see a pretty big difference in terms of the brightness of the plastic and glass. Um, if I just zoom in here. Upping the specular depth increases the accuracy of the, of the bottle um, and of the glass rendering itself. Um, so I always recommend for your final render, especially if it's glass or plastic or something that's see-through, um, to increase your specular depths, doesn't matter on the application you're using, whether it's Cinema 4D, Blender, Maya, whatever. Um, look at increasing your render settings, especially the specular depth, as it makes a huge difference. So the three main things to keep in mind when you're doing these glass or frosted plastics or frosted glass renders is the specular depth of your of your scene and of your render settings, um, improving kind of how attractive that is uh, to the client and to other consumers. Also the thickness of your glass bottle. Um, we want accurate thickness across the bottle itself. Um, so we get the right reflections, the right refractions, the right depth look, everything. It's a really vital step. And also of course, the density of your plastics or of your glass. Um, making sure you're tweaking that to the correct level um, to ensure a realistic render. As always, these project files and assets will be available on my Patreon so you can just get instant access to these frosted glasses and plastic materials that you can use in your own renders, as well as the uh, models such as the moisturizer and the serum container, and you can just do whatever you like with those. But yeah. If you learned something new and enjoyed this video today, remember to subscribe and hit a thumbs up on the video. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, see you guys next time.